Good morning, everybody. This is Ome Congo, Dr. O here. And like many people, I wanted to share some comments and some thoughts related to Dr. Ben Carson referring to slaves as enslaved individuals as immigrants. The fact of the matter is, we can go on and on about this, and many people calling him a sellout, and, and Uncle Tom, uh, not really knowing the history as it relates to Uncle Tom, knowing that he actually was uh, killed because he chose not to, as we say, snitch on slaves, but that's a story for another day. Really, let's talk about Ben Carson as it relates to the overall representation of the Trump administration continually undermining the black experience. We have these ridiculous comments from Dr. Carson talking about immigrants, talking about enslaved individuals being immigrants, but this is part of a larger narrative as it relates to the black experience and how the Trump administration responds to us. Let's remember that they just came from the African American Museum just two weeks ago, and maybe they didn't actually spend their time going to the bottom of the, the to the lower level of the museum to get a real understanding of the slave experience. Maybe they spent much of their time on the first floor. Who knows? But once again, we see they undermine our experience, and I don't care if Dr. Carson is black. We know that you don't have to only be a non-black person to undermine a black experience. But let's add in Betsy DeVos, who also said that historically black colleges started as, as an original example of school choice. Let's also look at President Trump's numerous comments that were disrespectful towards the African-American community, such as, where is my African-American? Or other comments showing that he really doesn't respect people telling people who are in rallies, making sure that they get rid of certain people, not even in allowing um, black folks who represented a, a certain look or who wore certain shirts that said certain things in, into his rallies, and then encouraging people to knock the crap out of them. And of course, we can go back to his history of discrimination, discriminatory lawsuits uh, with that came that were brought to him from the federal government. So Ben Carson is just the latest example of a, a presidency that is intent on undermining our experience. Let's take it even further. Dr. Ben Carson, who now is the head of HUD, which he has no right to occupy, also talked about his 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 issues with being poor, saying that he wished that he was he, he he thought that he was born into a different family. He said that poverty is a choice. So when we look at the further policy implications of, of what he's going to be doing at HUD, we should even be uh, more scared. But the fact of the matter is, Dr. Ben Carson, Betsy DeVos, Donald Trump, and, and others within their staff have no real respect for the black experience. And this is just the latest example of what will be many examples. And if you don't know what it's like to have your whole experience undermined by those in power, by presidents and other people, you should really try to step into other people's shoes. I know many people who are in the Jewish community, they felt completely undermined when the White House chose to not mention Jewish people who were killed during the Holocaust in their Holocaust Remembrance Day. Again, that's how you undermine a people's experience. How do you undermine women's experiences? For example, you make these rules about international abortions, and when you have the signing, you have no women there even present who could possibly speak towards a different experience. At every level, at every juncture, this administration undermines, undermines, and undermines. These are people who are millionaires and billionaires who have made their way to the top and have no care for the people who are at the bottom or who come from an experience different from theirs. I, I do believe that Ben Carson, at the end of the day, does not is not proud of the fact that he's a black person, and he can spend his time, and this is not calling him a sellout, this is just he doesn't understand his experience here, because he's been so caught up in, in, in Trump world, and trying to, to be like everybody else, that he's joined an administration that fundamentally does not understand the black experience. So I say black folks, I say anybody who feels like they're being undermined by this administration, saddle up because at the end of the day we have to continue to fight we have to continue to make sure that our experiences are understood make sure that we're proving that our experiences will always be heard never disrespected always validated we need to prove it with our dollars we need to prove it with our votes and we need to prove it with our voices if they don't understand we need to make them understand because at the end of the day we've been disrespected and marginalized way too much and it really doesn't matter what the race is all of those apologists out there for for ben carson talking about he made a mistake and this is nonsense guys when are we going to start raising people to a higher bar when are we going to start expecting people who have these phds and this higher education and who run for these offices or been nominated to these prestigious positions to actually think to actually speak, to actually think before they speak, to actually get out there and, and have a clue about what they say, as opposed to letting these people continually, based on our low expectations and low bar of them, continue to throw out these things and then spend days, weeks, hours on the news debating what these people actually meant. I once heard somebody say that 
I'm so distracted by what you're doing that I can't pay any attention to what you're actually saying. We need to look at people for their actions. We need to look at people for what they're saying. And we can't go into this process of continually justifying things, continually trying to explain ignorance away. As Dr. King said, the two most dangerous things in this world are sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Yes, we have some people who don't really know about particular things and we can't blame folks for being ignorant on something. We're all ignorant, but too many people in this administration have dem demonstrated a conscience of stupidity, meaning that they intentionally don't care, they intentionally feel like they can disrespect, and they intentionally feel that they can mislead people towards these negative perceptions of particular groups. And yes, the slave example is just the latest example, but this campaign was built on it, and this administration continues to do it. So the real question at the end of the day is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to speak up and make sure that your experiences are being acknowledged? What are you going to do to make sure that people aren't disrespecting who you are? What are you going to do to make sure that this Department of Education is respecting your history and your culture in these schools? What are you going to do to make sure that HUD is going to be an organization that respects the rights of all people, particularly those who are in the most need of this most important thing that we call housing, as he goes into an organization that he's probably most likely going to undermine just on the sheer weight of his ignorance of the field on its own. We need to get up, we need to wake up, and we need to call out ignorance wherever it comes from, Democrat, Republican, independent because it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if people choose to undermine our experience, that's their choice. But if we continue to let them, then shame on us. Peace.